Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Grixis control deck featuring Sauron the Dark Lord as our commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This 6 mana 7 6 has a very powerful ward ability, making the opponent sacrifice a legendary artifact or a legendary creature just to target Sauron. And then we can maybe even counter the removal spell that's trying to take it out and force the opponent to do it all over again. And then whenever an opponent casts any spell whatsoever, we get to amass orcs one. So if we don't already have an orc army, we get to make a 0 0 token with a plus one plus one counter on it. And then with each subsequent amass, we can put an additional plus one plus one counter on the existing army. Army. And then whenever an army we control deals combat damage to a player, the ring tempts us, which is another very interesting mechanic here. And whenever the ring tempts us, we may discard our hand if we do draw four cards. So there's a lot going on here with Sauron, but I'll try to break down the general game plan. As you can see, we've got a ton of artifacts that help us accelerate our mana. That's one way to put Sauron in play before the opponent's prepared to deal with it. They may not have any legendary creatures yet to sacrifice to the ability. So that's definitely one way to get a quick win with Sauron. As the opponent starts casting spells with Sauron in play, we get to amass our army, and then we can use that army to potentially refresh our hand, especially if we can attempt the ring once, then the army me becoming a ring bear makes it easier to attack past any blockers. Then another way we can leverage Sauron is by tempting the ring, even without the army hitting the opponent, and we can do that with a number of instants and sorceries, like Birthday Escape, which also draws a card for one mana, We've got Golem's Bite, which we can exile from our graveyard after giving a creature minus two minus two, Ranger's Firebrand deals two damage to any target, and we've got the Envelope, a ramp artifact, and the ring tempts us when it enters. So if we cast any of these spells while we control Sauron, and we're hopefully empty-handed, we can also draw four cards, so that's also very powerful. Could also play some other synergies that maybe work well with army token, maybe play a Changeling Outcast as an unblockable army that can hit the opponent and draw four, but I went with a more controlling approach, so I don't want to play too many creatures that may end up dying to opposing removal or some of our sweeper effects. And that's this next category, we've got a ton of interaction, discard spells, removal, sweepers, that can make sure the opponent doesn't establish a foothold in the game, so we can slam down Sauron while the opponent's off balance. And then we also have some counter spells, which can help protect Sauron once it's in play, especially Pact of Negation, a zero mana counter spell, can help uh, protect Sauron after we tapped out for it, and the opponent may not expect us to have the Pact of Negation, we'll have enough mana to pay for the Pact on the following turn, and in the meantime we get to leverage Sauron's ability after maybe hitting the opponent with army and drawing four new cards. And then the final two categories here are just some of the miscellaneous. We've got plenty of card draw, ways to take extra turns, can also be very powerful with Sauron out, and then a ton of planeswalkers and other threats that can help close out the game. So yeah, that's our general game plan for this deck. For those that want a more detailed card breakdown, I'll keep going. In our ramp category, we also have Dark Ritual, perfect for putting something like a Phyrexian Arena in play on turn one to start drawing two per turn. Can also be quite powerful with some of our ramp artifacts like Archive or Firemind vessel just to give us a permanent mana advantage as the game progresses. Then at two mana we've got the classic ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone. Some of these only make colorless mana which can be a little awkward when you're trying to ramp into Nicol Bolas Dragon God but they're still very useful to have. Then we also have Treasure Map which can help us scry, eventually transforms into Treasure Cove and is joined by a few treasure tokens so that's also a way of ramping while giving us some extra card selection. Then the file of Galadriel has a great synergy with Sauron, since if we hit the opponent with an army, discard our hand and draw four. With file out we get to draw five instead. And then replicating ring can also ramp and fix our mana, and if we wait long enough we'll get to replicate it ring tokens to make even more mana, and since we're a control deck aiming for late game that can certainly happen. Skyclave Relic is indestructible, can also be kicked for additional copies to make more mana. The Celestis can switch between day and night to give us some life gain and card selection. And then Astral Cornucopia is also a 3 mana ramp artifact if we play it for x equals 1, but we can sink even more mana into it if we have it available. Then a big scorer can discard, draw two, and make two treasure tokens, another way of ramping. Firemind Vessel and Hedron Archive can tap for two mana, so they can also give us a huge mana boost. If I were playing alchemy cards, I would be playing key to the archive as well. We've got Solemn as a creature that can maybe chum block, protect our planeswalkers while ramping and drawing cards. 
and then Goldspan Dragon when it attacks or becomes targeted makes a treasure token and we can sacrifice treasures for two mana instead of one so also a synergy with other treasure makers and then a Gilded Lotus can tap for three mana of any one color right away so we can often cast another spell alongside it and then in our removal category we've got Cut Down, Fairy Impulse and a Lightning Bolt as spot removal we've got Duress, Inquisition of Cozy Lack and Thought Seize as hand disruption and then we've got some two mana removal with Feed the Swarm, which can also hit enchantments, go for the throat and Heartless Act to deal with creatures at instant speed, Shielders Edict can also make the opponent sacrifice a Planeswalker, a Braid to deal three damage to a creature or destroy an artifact, and then we've got Consign to Oblivion, can first bounce an opposing non-land permanent, and then maybe make the opponent discard two cards with Oblivion, Angras Rampage to make the opponent sacrifice either an artifact, creature or Planeswalker at sorcery speed, Got a few sweepers as well, with Sweltering Suns dealing 3 to each creature, can also be cycled, playing this over other options that damage Planeswalkers, since we have a few Planeswalkers ourselves. And then Extinction Event, especially if it names Odd, can be quite effective, since Sauron and the tokens have an even mana cost, so if we name Odd it could be a one-sided sweeper. And then Rivers Rebuke, one of the best blue cards in the format, can send everything packing, makes it very easy for the army to hit the opponent and draw 4 cards. Once we get Cyclonic Rift in a couple days, we'll add that to the list as well. And then Spiteful Banditry, another sweeper, could also play Meatog Massacre, but the nerfed alchemy version doesn't gain us any life, otherwise I would be running it. Banditry can make us some treasure instead, which can also come in handy. And then a cut to ribbons, also more of a two mana removal spell, dealing four damage to a creature. And then with Aftermath, we can drain the opponent to death. Also nice to have Aftermath cards with Sauron, since we may end up discarding them if the opponent doesn't have any targets for them. But then we can still get value out of the graveyard with ribbons or with the Oblivion part from Consigned to Oblivion. And then we've got the two commands left, Prismari Command and Colgan's Command can both deal two damage and destroy an artifact. And then Prismari Command maybe draw to discard to make a treasure, Colgan's Command can make the opponent discard or get back a creature from our graveyard. Then we've got a few counter spells, Pact of Negation, definitely the more exciting one if we can cast it alongside Sauron and have the opponent first sacrifice a legendary creature or artifact. Good Spell Pierce to counter a non-creature spell, unless the opponent pays 2. Wash Away to counter an opposing commander for just 1 mana, otherwise a 3 mana counter spell. Negate for more non-creature spells, and counter spell of course, a classic, just double blue to counter any spell. And then I've covered the next category except for Orcish Bowmasters, which can also punish the opponent for drawing extra cards by dealing damage and growing an army token. Can also be a way of making an army at instant speed, to maybe flash it in end of turn, untap, play Sauron and draw 4 cards right away, can be very powerful. Then we've got some more card advantage cards here with Snapcaster Mage letting us replay an instant or sorcery from the graveyard, especially effective with Time Warp letting us take an extra turn, which is quite nice with active Planeswalkers or Sauron drawing us extra cards. And then a Phyrexian Arena can also draw an extra card each turn at the cost of one life. Expressive Iteration, another great two for one. And then we get to some of our extra finishers in case we don't get there with Sauron. Shieldred can also gain extra life if we draw cards, so can offset something like a Phyrexian Arena. And if we draw four with Sauron, we get to gain eight, which will keep us in the game. Chandra is also incredibly versatile, can deal 4 damage to a creature, help us ramp by adding double red or provide card advantage. We've got Nicol Bolas, another perk of playing Grixis Colors, and we've got 3 Nicol Bolas in the deck. We've got the Ravager, a 4-4 flyer that makes the opponent discard when it enters, 7 mana to transform, and with all the mana ramp it's not too difficult in this deck. We've got a Nicol Bolas Dragon God at 5 mana, even if it's not the easiest to cast, it's definitely worth it when we get the chance. And Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh, another very fun planeswalker to control, emptying the opponent's hand with a plus one, providing card advantage with the plus two, and then the minus four gives us more removal. We've got a Glory Bringer, can come down, exert, dealing four damage to a non-dragon creature, and then in two turns we can do it again. There's Ashiok Nightmare Muse, which can also deal with all sorts of permanents using the minus three and make the opponent discard, and then make additional Nightmare tokens. And a Liliana Dreadhor General also has a good synergy with the mass armies we make with Sauron, because whenever a creature dies we get to draw a card, can make zombies, and can also make each player sacrifice two creatures. So it can also maybe sacrifice a random zombie token and an army from Sauron, and keep our Dark Lord alive. And then a mana base has mostly just dual lands for mana fixing in a three color deck, but a few utility lands include Hall of the Storm Giants as my only creature land, which can be pretty impactful late game. Got Soaring City, Abandoned Mire, and Crucible as channel lands. And then uh, I've got a couple tri lands as well here with Xander's Lounge, Command Tower, Fabled Passage, and Theater. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Itali, Primal Conqueror, Red Green Ramp, and our hands, pretty nice. 
Got all our colors, good mix of removal, card draw, ramp. Can even bolt a bird if needed. No birds of paradise on arena, sadly, but plenty of elves. Okay, so play this on blue. Gonna need a lot of black man eventually for Nicol Bolas, so pretty far from making that happen, but I wanna iteration next turn and be able to play my land from exile. And a destiny spinner I don't really care about. So let's iterate, try and hit our land drops. And a temple will do. And then I think just another land in hand. So Glorybringer seems worth keeping. Can play it next turn since we're definitely not casting a Nicol Bolas. Still needs triple black, so that's going to take a while. That was a downside of playing Temple over just playing a black source at that turn. Okay, so Glorybringer can snipe the Elvish Mystic, which is more threatening than Destiny Spinner. Don't have any counter spells in hand, so. Next turn, play Sauron. Invasion of Zendikar is a good one. So next turn, they can play a Tally and hope that they don't hit anything too powerful off of it. If it hits a counter spell, it doesn't do anything. If it hits a removal spell, I guess they can take out a Glory Bringer, perhaps. But uh, hitting a Planeswalker would be painful. At least we'll get to amass our army a bunch. And opponent hit a Symbiosis and a Cold Steel Heart. Alright, so Symbiosis could still be something scary, but a Cold Steel Heart is manageable. Army up to a 3-3 already. And a Cityscape Leveler. Ooh, that one's scary. They can also unearth it, so I'm gonna have to kill some stuff. Glorybringer Exert kills Spinner, and then Heartless Act Gopher Throat can clear a path. But uh, opponent's gonna be able to replay Itali or Unearth Leveler pretty quickly. But so it goes. Could also wait to cast Heartless Act, but that means not attacking with my team here. So let's just go for it. And then at least they cannot take out Sauron unless they put a Legendary in play first. Attack all out. Could exert take out Spinner in case they decide to take out Glorybringer here. And then I wasn't gonna discard and draw since we want to play Nicole Bolas next turn. So can still make this a ring bear. And politely decline, keep up Lightning Bolt. Arcane Signets next. So they're not going for Leveler then. Tyranax Rex. Okay. Can transform Invasion of Zendikar or poison us for a bunch. Our army can attack past it and then Bolt would finish them off. So yeah, this is just game. Could also finally cast our Nicol Bolas. But uh, yeah, the Ring Bearer makes this attack pass 8 8, which is bigger. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Calyx, guided by Fate, Green-White Enchantments. Our hand's not very well suited at dealing with enchantments, at least ones that aren't creatures. But uh, I don't think I want to mulligan this. Got functional mana, but a ramp. And then Pact can also be key at protecting Sauron. Still gonna get the tapped Sulphur Falls out of the way first. And then next turn we could Signet plus Impulse in the same turn. Definitely want to take out Sanctum Weaver. The game holding priority while we're tapped out kind of gives away the fact that we have a Pact of Negation in hand, so I'll try to swiftly pass priority here. Calyx we can answer with our Sweltering Suns, and I think I'll take the one for one here. Don't want Calyx hitting me and comping something. So 
Season of Growth into Paladin class. Paladin class is going to make it harder for us to protect Sauron with Pact of Negation, since it's going to cost one more. So I guess we'll just develop our mana then with Lotus plus Envelope, and then we'll have plenty of mana to pay the one for Paladin class. Could have also kept the Envelope until after we play Sauron to potentially discard our hand and draw. But uh, we might get this Liliana going first. Archon resolves, triggers Season of Growth. Can start by having a look with Inquisition. And take away probably the Transformation as an answer for Sauron. And then Liliana can just deal with Archon. Now, Sigil of the Empty Throne is still quite threatening, so it's something I'm considering countering with Pact. Opponent found the land and goes for Kallax first. Okay, that's fine. So it gets a bunch of triggers, and then now we get to play Sauron with Pact backup. Counter Sigil, and hopefully keep Kallax at bay. Ooh, Questing Beast. So that could just trade for Sauron. Otherwise it will finish off our Liliana as well. But I guess we can just replay Sauron since we've got the mana for it. Seems better than uh, using Pacts when I may not be able to beat Sigil. So they get to draw off uh, Season of Growth. Still trades for Sauron. And we'll trade here. Get to draw Fluliana and a counter spell is nice. So let's do some math. If I play Sauron... I should still be able to cast a Pact through Paladin class, so yeah, that's what we'll go for. I can also just Counterspell now, that seems easier. Our army is slowly growing. And eventually we can attack past Kallax and maybe refresh our hand after having used our Counterspells. We can only cast one of the two instead of both because of Paladin class. But one should suffice. Opponent goes for Sigil. Let's just counterspell. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Facing Anafenza, Kentry Spirits, a bolster deck. And I could counter Anafenza with Wash Away. The rest of my lands are a little clunky, but we'll make it work. So yeah, I hope they run out turn to Anafenza, and we can wash away. There we go. And now we can play Guardian Idol off Pathway. Want to play it on black for Nicol Bolas. So Idol doesn't actually help us ramp out Bolas, but still extra mana, so I'll take it. Companion draws. So next turn I can go Ring plus Theater. And turn after, maybe, play Nicol Bolas. They're looking at my Guardian Idol. Is this maybe a Fragment Reality type effect? It is. Okay, so in that case, just play a Replicating Ring. Still on track to play Nicol Bolas next turn. Can maybe start plussing if they don't have a lot of pressure in play. Getting to Time Warp with a Planeswalker in play is always the best feeling. Yeah, Sigarda Splendor, that's manageable, so... Play Bolas and uh, just plus. And then next turn we could Time Warp. And River's Rebuke, also quite powerful. So we're drawing our heavy hitters. Inquisitor Captain exiled. And replace Anafenza for 4 mana. 1 mana left. Companion hits our Planeswalker, but we seem to untap with it here. 
Okay. So we can start by plussing. Snapcaster Mage, get back Wash Away is an option, but get back Time Warp is a little bit more exciting. So, don't mind if I do. Should have played land first to play around Mana Tithe, I guess. But that works, and then player tapped Theater. So I get to take an extra turn, activate Nicol Bolas once again, and then play Snapcaster Mage on Time Warp. So I do feel a little bit bad for my opponents, I'm not gonna lie. Plus again. Ultimate is minus 8, so still gonna take a second. Play Snapcaster. Target Time Warp, which does not exile itself, unlike the more recent Time Warp effects. Now, if we also had a Sauron in play at the same time, could have been applying a lot of pressure, but I'll just take the card advantage here. Okay. Plus again. And the Sweltering Suns can clean up the creatures. Could also Reverse Rebuke, of course. Or we can play our commander. And then maybe cast the Sweltering Suns or Rebuke next turn. Keep Snapcaster back to protect Nicol Bolas. Seems more relevant, although... I guess hitting them for two could have prevented the card draw from Splendor. Flowering pumps on a Fenza, but also makes an army. And a Pouncer is their last card. So, yeah. Our goal is going to be to minus eight Nicol Bolas, and I think we can get there. And that's enough for a concession already. Yeah, between Rivers Rebuke and Sweltering Suns to clear their board, we should be in great shape. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Clothus, a god of destiny. Our hand's pretty rough. I don't love Pact of Negation in the matchup. It's not like Red Green's gonna kill Sauron all that easily. And then we're missing red mana, just need more lands in general. Okay, only two lands, but uh, quite a bit of artifact ramp. So Hopefully get to see our Dragon God in action. The Colorless Mana from Mindstone doesn't help to ramp towards it, but it does maybe set up a turn 3 Firemind Vessel, which will certainly help. Shivan Devastator as a 1-1, one -one, not too threatening. So we've got the Mana for Vessel. And there's Clothus. Devotion count is 3. But if we get to untap with Vessel, it means untapping with at least 6 mana, which is enough for Sauron. So let's see, if we go Hedron Archive, I've got 5 left, but it doesn't cast Nicol Bolas. So I think going for Sauron is fine then. Can start amassing our army. Questing Beast, okay. That one could trade for Sauron. Probably just take the hits, and then next turn Nicol Bolas could minus on it. So if I play a Bolas, I can still call against command. So then we can deal with Devastator so it doesn't finish off our Dragon God. And then I might just want to call against command now. Deal to opponent discards. And then I'm considering just uh, hitting the opponent with army to refresh our hand with Sauron. Since we just have a bunch of a ramp. But I might want to leave Sauron back to block a haste creature. Okay, that's a nice hand. Snapcaster, get back Colligan's command. Always great value. Although, that one's gone. 
Clothus exiles it, so Snapcaster negate or feed the swarm, still looking good. Okay, Phoenix can be annoying to deal with since it keeps coming back, but we could just feed the swarm it twice by a Snapcaster getting back feed the swarm, killing the egg, but we can plus first. Alright, so kill the egg. We are getting pretty low on life, admittedly. So I can Snapcaster, get back Feed the Swarm. This time it doesn't cost me any life. And then I could keep Negate up. I could also just play all of the Storm Giants here, for instance, attack. And then refresh my hand once again with Sauron. Which I don't mind. We'll make a Snapcaster or Ring Bear. Did not pick up any relevant interaction here, so yeah, I might regret uh, discarding the gate, but got some nice dragons instead. We fall to six. Nope, opponent makes mana for a caretaker. Okay. So, has hexproof. But we'll see if we can figure out a way to win. Nicol Bolas, the Ravager, makes him discard their last card. Which was a Domri's Ambush. Glorybringer can add more pressure. And alright, that's enough for a concession. So if I play Glorybringer, Snapcaster can attack unopposed since it's a ring bearer. Would let us draw and discard, ditch Inquisition of Kozilek, perhaps. So we're attacking for a non-lethal, but definitely a healthy amount. And then, even with the extra damage from Clothus, we should have been alright. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Joyra, Weatherlight, Captain. And uh, yeah, this hand seems decent. Turn to Signets, ramp out Ashiok. Sweltering Suns lines up pretty well against a 3-3 commander. Turn one Renegade map. Okay, could hang on to Spell Pierce here. And Command Tower will disguise it nicely. Weaponsmith, that one I cannot counter. So now I have to decide between Signets, keep up Spell Pierce, or Rampage, kill Weaponsmith. Although Sweltering Suns deals with a Weaponsmith, and whatever they ramp out with Weaponsmith, I'm somewhat likely to Spell Pierce. So we'll give this a try. And then I can maybe wait on Sweltering Suns until after they play Joyra. Ooh, Lotus, we definitely want to counter. And our opponent casts a Pact of Negation on the way back. Oof. So next turn our opponent has to pay 5 mana for Pact. Now sadly, Rampage cannot make them sacrifice Lotus since they still have that uh, Renegade map. So that's too bad. But it might still be worth it to take out Weaponsmith to make it harder for the opponent to... Uh, Cast another spell after paying five. Their opponent passes. And yeah, Ashiok Bounce Lotus looks good. Now they can play Jora, which we can take out with Sweltering Suns. And they're unlikely to play too many spells alongside it. Ashok's attacking their hand, getting rid of Expressive Iteration. So yeah, this has been an interesting game so far. A Renegade map finally sacrificed. Okay, Narset's a good one. Prevents us from drawing cards. Although we can pressure it with our Nightmares. And then we can just play the Dark Lord. So opponent gets to have their fun with Jorah for at least a turn. Narset goes digging, finding Tormod scripts, free way to draw with Joyra. 
Our opponent playing Mindstone before Jora points towards a different play here. And yeah, it's going to be a Reverse Rebuke to send everything packing. Alright, so we got to rebuild. So, just going to go Signets into Ashok. And bounce Lotus again. Opponent cast Lotus for the third time into Jora, and now we've got a few ways to answer it. We can play Sauron and then still Fiery Impulse, that's definitely a good start. And then Extinction Event on Odds could be effective since all our cards are even. Probably gonna end up cycling Sweltering Suns after we deal with Narset. Lotus does make it pretty easy to replay Jora, so it's only a temporary solution. And discover the formula. Okay. Powerful alchemy card draw effect. Currently they don't have an easy way of dealing with Sauron, and that's enough for a concession. Yeah, Ashok did a number on them, can take out Narset and maybe refresh our hands after hitting them with our army at the same time, and then uh, our commander can kill them pretty quickly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Galta and Mavern. And our hand is... okay. Um, a bit light on uh, removal, perhaps. Don't think the Bowmasters is going to trigger much in this matchup, but could maybe kill a Mana Elf early. So I'll give it a shot. And then Cornucopia will probably play on X equals 1 at 3 mana total. So if a target presents itself, I'm not going to hesitate to play the Bowmasters. It's going to be a Haven, which I'll spell Piers to slow them down. And then Cornucopia seems fine here. X equals 1. Bowden plays the Queen, which we can finish off with the Bowmasters pretty nicely. And then still have Prismari Command available. Then if I make a treasure, I'm guaranteed to play Sauron, since this land enters tapped. A battle for Bretagard. Can start making tokens. So more of a green-white token deck, I suppose. Yeah, let's draw to discard and make a treasure. Could also just cycle the canyon, but I really want to make sure I can play Sauron here. And then casting Time Warp afterwards is going to be more effective. So, probably don't need Solemn as much, whereas Arena can draw action spells. And then with the treasure, I can play Sauron. Attack with our army, since I'll probably get a replacement. And play Sauron, which is hopefully going to stick around. And then next turn, Time Warp. And we'll see if we can hit the opponent with our army. And get to refresh our hand that way. King Darien pumps the team. And the Legion's landing. Ooh, Glorybringer takes out King Darien. Seems like a good starting point. I could time warp, but let's say I time warp here. Do I attack with Sauron and trade it for a bunch of tokens? Opponent probably takes it, so I can essentially get in for 7. But if I get to Time Warp while controlling Glorybringer, it makes it easier to untap. And then now Sauron and the army can attack. And take out Darien. Opponent will sacrifice King Darien, and then they can ambush the army or soak up a bunch of damage. Opponent triple blocks 
the army, so at least they still take seven from Sauron. Tokens attack, flip legions landing, and yeah, opponent's going very wide here. I'll take it. Counting on this time warp to be effective. Vanquish the horde to kill everything. Alright, gotta reset. Fair enough. And a skewed swarm to take over. Let's take care of that before it gets out of hand. And then I can uh, play for Xen Arena. Which is also pretty nice if uh, I get to time warp and draw two extra cards. So, opponent hasn't had a chance to play Galta and Mavron yet. A White Sun's Twilight to make three 1-1s. One okay. Do I want to just time warp here? I think that's reasonable. Tap, draw two more. At least we're making progress. And then now, can't quite replay Sauron, but we could play Mindstone, big score, discard a braid, and then uh, take it from there. Okay, wash away, perfect answer for Galtai Maver now. Not that they can cast it. So take three poison. Arena down to 16, and a Sweltering Sun's a pretty fitting answer to here. Don't think I'm casting it right now. Would rather keep up Wash Away, and then maybe wipe the board after they make more tokens. Our opponent unable to target Sauron and take it out with removal because of Ward. No legendary artifact or creature in play. But opponent has shown a few sweepers already. So you never know. Probably deny the lifelink. Don't care about poison once we wipe the board here. Opponent passes. They're not willing to give me an army token. Abandoned Mire can get back Bowmasters, Glorybringer, Solemn. So it's pretty decent here. Might mill something else. So what do we like? Glorybringer's the fastest clock. Let's say I cast Glorybringer. Then I can still Sweltering Suns and keep a wash away for Galtime Mavern. Or I can hang on to Bowmasters, which can also help me make an army if our opponent doesn't cast anything. Let's get the Bowmasters. And then probably start by attacking. Opponent might jump with a 1-1, one -one. they might take it. And then we'll Sweltering Suns. And then I have the flexibility of Bowmasters, Wash Away, could also cash in Mindstone. So Danto makes a 1-1 one -one Vampire, which we could take out with Bowmasters at any point. Sram's Expertise, make more tokens, cast something for free. Should maybe flash in Bowmasters now, in case they have an Anthem effect they want to put in play. And then... Could also just counter Sram's Expertise here. And then probably untap, hit the opponent with Army to refuel. As opposed to having to slog through a bunch of tokens. Alright, Pwn does have a Lanor Elves, so that's probably chumping the army. Unless we can remove it, and Snapcaster can do exactly that. Or we can keep up Snapcaster on a removal spell, could also flash back Time Warp. So that's probably going to close out the game here. So yeah, let's attack. Bodon chumps the army, that's fine. Opponent still takes 8, and then Snapcaster Time Warp. We'll finish it out. Should have played land first in case they didn't block the army for some reason. Alright. No real need for this. 
down to 10 we go. And then by playing Envelope we also have the Ring Tempt Us, so we can draw 4. It's always nice. And there we have it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Iluna, Apex of Wishes. And this is often played as a combo deck trying to cheat Omniscience into play. So having instant speed removal to kill a token that they try to mute it onto, as well as two counter spells is ideal for this matchup. So turn one, theater, maybe for an island. Turn two, Cold Steel Hearts. Can name blue. And then we'll have our shields up. Okay. Opponent cultivates, and then next turn they'll maybe try to make a token and then mutate onto it the turn after. So that's what we need to stop. Okay, so don't need to have shields up on counterspell necessarily. So maybe go for file plus tapped hall, and then we could still impulse or wash away if needed, but I doubt it. Eureka moments keeps ramping. Okay, so let's see now. Can't really afford to tap out for Sauron, so play tap lounge and pass with big score and all our counter spells available. No token end of turn. Into the story to draw. That seems worth countering. Draw four. So. Can big score, discard maybe my land, and then still counterspell with the treasure. Ooh, Orcish Bowmasters. That could be a nice way of uh, punishing the card draw, but uh, still probably want to counter it here. And then Bowmasters could also kill a token at instant speed. So now if I tap out for Sauron, I'll still have Wash Away back up. As well as Bowmasters, I hope that's enough. And this Restoration to Ramp makes a token. So that happens. So yeah, the opponent's goal is to just put an Omniscience on the battlefield and then string together all their card draw to basically overwhelm us. Channel by Force takes out our token, so we won't be able to hit the opponent with it. That's okay. Could decide to just play Bowmasters anyway. And then we'll get a 1 1 army to hit the opponent. Although I probably want to hang on to my interaction anyway. So let's just wait. And then cycle Sweltering Suns. Cut to ribbons. That one I wouldn't mind letting go to the graveyard. Okay, so I'm kind of waiting for the opponent to make a move here. They now can make tokens with Argoth as well. But we've got plenty of answers. Thrill of possibility. Alright, might be time to deploy the Bowmasters. Take out their token. And that's enough for a concession. Yeah, Bowmasters kind of wrecks this uh, Iluna deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Thalia and the Gitrog monster, so I want to make sure to hang on to my mountain. Our hand is, uh, yeah, pretty powerful if we can cast Rebuke and Snickle Bolas. Hopefully we get to transform Treasure Map to help with that. And then playing Map into a ramp artifact like Celestis is quite satisfying, as we can immediately scry. So we'll see how this goes. Reverse Rebuke, always a nice reset button. And yeah, I'll keep those basic lines. Pretty good in this matchup, where non-basics enter tapped. And then probably prioritize playing Swamp, since we need triple black for Nicol Bolas. What is our opponent working with? A Terra Sunder on treasure map. Yep, they don't want us to have it. So play Celestis, since we might end up kicking a Skyclave Relic. 
But uh, yeah, there's a Nicol Bolas incoming. And that's pretty good on an empty board. Just plus. Opponent has to get rid of a card in hand. And a Bowmaster is also a good way of punishing a black market connections. Shapeshifter to pressure Nicol Bolas. If we draw land, we can just rebuke and send them back to the Stone Ages. Although with Thalia and the Gidrog, that may not be that easy. Mythos, a nice answer to Nicol Bolas. Okay, so now we could be in a bit of trouble depending on uh, this market connections. But Bowmasters is definitely a useful tool. So I could pass with Bowmasters and Counterspell up. If I draw a land... Hmm, I didn't. Yeah, cannot quite play Envelope or Relic and then both two mana spells, but I do want to develop my mana. So I guess we do still play an Envelope. And then maybe keep Relic to play Kicked. And this turn, I might just go for Bowmasters then. So I'll go full control, see what our opponent decides to do with connections, and then flash in Bowmasters. So they go for all modes. So Bowmasters can take out a Shapeshifter then. And get a 2-2 Orc army. And there's Thali and the Gidrog. Opponent's down to 13, but they are drawing extra cards. And now our lands will likely enter tapped. So yeah, seems like a good time for a Rivers Rebuke. Try to turn a corner. Although Gidrog makes it easier to redeploy everything by playing an extra land. So yeah, it's a close call. What if I play a Sauron or maybe a Kicked Skyclave Relic? Artifacts will still enter untapped. So I'll still be able to keep up Spell Pierce at the very least. And then next turn maybe Rebuke, have more mana for Counter Spell to counter Thali on the way down. So nothing to get back with Restoration. Thalia and the Gidrog attack, and so does a Shapeshifter. Just gonna take it. And then uh, can just deal one upstairs. So we're potentially hitting the opponent back for four. Shieldroot can gain them life back. But this Rivers Rebuke should be effective. And then want to play Marsh after casting Rebuke. So we can have it enter untapped. And our opponent explodes. They weren't necessarily dead, but yeah, take 4 down to 4, and then they're on a 4 turn clock from Connections if we can counter spell Shieldred. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Teferi, Temporal Pilgrim. And uh, our hand's pretty well set up for the matchup. We've got Bowmasters to punish card draw, treasure map as something that can be a nice source of card advantage. Edict answers Planeswalkers, and then Pact of Negation to kind of protect our Sauron the turn we try and cast it. Alright, so turn two. I think I just try and tap out for Treasure Map, make them counter it, or I can pass and then Flash and Bowmasters, perhaps. Yeah, it's pretty important that we resolve Treasure Map. So opponent's got three mana up now. Do I play Bowmasters? Yeah, it's somewhat likely to prompt a response. And then I can Treasure Map Scry. And there's a Wash Away. Alright, according to plan. Would have been nice to have the Bowmasters in play. Quite good against the Teferi, as you can imagine. But uh, if we're just going to play the draw-go game, it's going to favor the blue deck with more instant speed card draw. So kind of have to make something happen. And Treasure Map's a pretty good card. Opponent's got a Midnight Clock. Treasure Map also helps this guy's Pact of Negation, holding priority. In the meantime, we picked up some pretty bad cards for the matchup, cut down and go for the throat, although could maybe answer the token from Teferi. Theater... it's not ideal. 
think we want some uh, untapped lands or other ramp cards, maybe. So I could scry before drawing, which is maybe okay since I'm unlikely to draw four drop. Sweltering Suns can go. And a Chandra. All right, that's definitely a nice one to try and resolve next turn. But that opponent's just going to tap out here. Now we can transform treasure map, which will also give us a small mana boost. So let's do that now. And a pathway we'll keep. So draw pathway. So now I could play Chandra if they counter Impact of Negation and then yeah, yeah, I have a Chandra in play. That's an option. If I go for Sauron, it's going to be a little bit harder to then leverage the extra treasures since I'll have used a bunch of them. So let's try Chandra. Could also just let this get countered. We'll see. Spell Pierce. Oh, that I can just pay for. Even though the two treasures represent two cards with Cove. And Chandra resolves. No need for the mana, so we'll deal two damage. But next turn, the mana could help with Sauron. Midnight Clock takes up. Hoping to find some artifact removal eventually. If they play Teferi, I'll just let it resolve since we can Edict it. Thirst goes digging. So yeah, we've got the Planeswalker in place. So it's the opponent that's kind of forced to answer it. And still have our Pact of Negation for protection. So we'll add mana, play Sauron. And then I can still maybe draw with Treasure Cove. That resolves. Also going to be tough to answer for the blue deck. And just pass here. They might have a Rivers Rebuke to bounce everything, which is definitely worth pacting. Whelming Wave. So returns all creatures to hands. Doesn't answer Chandra, so that's fine. We'll just replay it. And then end of turn, I'll draw with Cove. Glorybringer. Probably not as relevant as Sauron. And an Ashok. Okay. So keep making mana. Chandra can ultimate next turn, so opponent has to take it out this turn pretty much. Can play Ashok, which is probably more relevant since it can bounce Midnight Clock. So more likely to see a response from the opponent. Question is whether I want to protect it with Pact of Negation or if I protect Chandra. Also have to watch out for something like a Disallow countering the ultimate. And all right, that's enough for a concession. Our Planeswalkers putting the opponent in a squeeze here. Awesome. All right, so we get to see our Grixis Sauron in action. Did not get to tempt the ring as much as I would have liked. Maybe tempt the ring without hitting the opponent with our army just by casting some instant or sorcery. Could also be a way to refuel when we're close to empty-handed. And that's also why I don't include a ton of card draw effects throughout the deck since we're counting on Sauron to do some of the drawing. But uh, yeah, a lot of ways you can approach this archetype could go with a more flavorful approach and include the Nazgul as well, which can also help you tempt the ring to redraw four cards, and that's certainly a viable strategy. I went with a more controlling approach with more instants and sorceries and more of the individually powerful cards, which is usually how I like to approach Brawl. But if it feels a bit too samesies with other Grixis decks, you can always spice it up and add more cards from the Lord of the Rings. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.